Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Chaos Head. Uh, I think this might be the first recording since I changed my audio setup. Uh, it might not be. I might be misremembering, but I believe this is. Um, so let me know how the audio sounds. Uh, I made, uh, I adjusted the location of my microphone. It used to be above me uh, with the microphone hanging down off of the arm. I've now adjusted it so that it is actually directly in front of me and actually sort of blocks my keyboard, but that's not too big of an issue because I can still get my hands under the arm to access my keyboard. And generally speaking, I know the controls for most games, so it's not really an issue. Um, but yeah, so uh, let me know if it sounds better. Uh, this allows me to hopefully have better uh, audio. It should My audio shouldn't cut out as much when I turn my head to like look at my second monitor or anything like that. Let's go ahead and get the timer started. So, uh, when I turned back, I was still in front of my PC monitor. I looked around at the center of the, of the room with a gasp. Still in that position, I listened stealthily. No sound. Had I imagined it? For five minutes, I went on paying close heed to conditions outside the container house, too terrified to move a finger. In the end, I didn't sense anybody's presence, and I opened the door at crack to look outside, just in case. No one was there. Had it been... a delusion? But even now, my heart seemed as though it were about to be crushed by anxiety. I set my eyes back to the monitor. Shogun had already departed from the chat. The traces he'd left behind him consisted of only four lines. Not wanting to see even those words, I hurried myself out of the chat room now that Shogun had vanished. My trembling still wouldn't stop. Sh -sh Shogun was challenging me. What could be so enjoyable about dogging me? Had Shogun finally resumed his activity, having selected me as his new victim? Or was I the most convenient person for him to pin his crimes on? <laughs> I gazed desperately at the post-awakening Sarah. I didn't want to be alone. I wanted to have someone by my side. I wanted someone to protect me. If I went to school, Rimi would be there. I couldn't endure spending more anxious time here on my own. I took off the threadbare trainers that I wore as house slippers, hastily put on my uniform and left my base. Going into the cold outdoor air made my headache somewhat milder. A most restless atmosphere, or a more restless atmosphere than usual hung about the city. Perhaps it was due to the earthquake. Sirens rang out unceasingly far off in the distance. I couldn't tell whether they were from fire trucks or ambulances, most likely both. Yamate Street, one block away from where I was walking now, had become incredibly congested. Numerous cars had caused head on collisions and then been left there in the middle of the road. I didn't see their drivers anywhere. The traffic was the fault of those abandoned cars, and the other drivers all honked on and on as if they were going insane. As I stumbled my way towards school, a lone dog cut in front of me, howling as it crossed my path. It was a chihuahua with bloodshot eyes, dragging its leash behind its short body as it sprinted with all its might. Huge globs of drool hung from its open mouth. It must have been gotten separated from its owner. As I saw it off, absentmindedly, I caught my toe on something and almost fell over. There was a fissure in the asphalt, with one side slightly higher than the other. This must be due to the earthquake. I stopped there and looked up at the sky. A few small clouds floated carefree, in the midst of its dim blue. Immediately following the earthquake, it had apparently turned white, as if it were one giant aurora, but I couldn't spot traces of that anywhere. This wasn't the usual Shibuya. I simply couldn't calm down. It wasn't merely because of the earthquake's influence. It wasn't merely because of my migraine. Not only that, a certain urge threatened to rack me. Though I was only walking around, for some reason I really felt like I 
might want to kill someone. By the time I reached the school gates, my anxiety and terror had grown stronger and stronger. I had chills. I wouldn't stop shaking. My headache resurged. When I looked more closely, there were people packed around the seniors' building. I tried to spot Remy there. Mysteriously, every single one of them was alike in how they looked up at the top of the school building. Oh, Taku. Misumi came running up to me. Excellent. If I asked him where Rimi was... No, I just showed up. He spoke with a terrible sobriety, and his expression was pale. One rarely saw him so shaken. What on earth could have happened? Bad? What was? Ooh. <laughs> oh, Fess, or F-E-S, or uh, whichever way it's pronounced. Okay, Misumi, you're kind of creeping me out now. I mean, you've been annoying, but never creepy. Yeah, uh, um, I think Misumi hit his head and he's gone cuckoo. Uh, such conversations entered my ears from around us. Oh, maybe it wasn't him. And it's just, you know, for some reason it sounds like it's the same voice from Misumi as it is supposed to be, I guess, for these other people. Maybe... I had an unpleasant premonition. Following the other students' gazes, I tentatively looked up at the school building. At the edge of the roof, stood a single girl. She held her D-sword, the same one as from her concert. Her pose was that of one lifting a prayer to God in the heavens. Kishimoto Ayase stood there. Kishibota Ayase felt the wind. A chilly wind had begun to carry with it a faint hint of winter. As she entrusted her body to the wind, her expression was very anguished, it, and drops of sweat rolled down her cheeks. <laughs> The Suemei Academy roof was surrounded by a metal fence nearly 2 meters high. Ayase was currently standing in the barely 30 centimeter space that lay outside it. She had already been standing there for over 10 minutes. If she took another step forward, she would fall from the four-story high school roof. Many students had gathered below. They watched Ayase with bated breath. <laughs> The people had long since contacted the police and emergency medical services, but they hadn't arrived on the spot yet, due in part to their needing to respond to the earthquake of several hours earlier. The teachers darted around to prepare a landing mat in case worse came to worst. But Ayase herself stretched out her back, standing up straight as if the ruckus below had nothing to do with her. It appeared, in fact, as if she were deliberately attempting to sever anything tying her interest to the world below. Raising her chin to look up at the sky, she closed both eyes. She resembled a shrine maiden praying to heaven. Perhaps because she had a good sense of balance, her body didn't waver whatsoever in the small wind. Never mind the fact that she was carrying a colossal sword, one approximately as tall as she was, in her right hand. That sword, her D-sword, was reading a pale light, blinking painfully on and off, as though synchronizing with its blinking, agonized sighs from, fell from Ayase's lips, and a weak, thin whimper, 
came leaking out with them. Or, excuse me, whisper, not whimper. The poetry woven by her whisper soon was erased in the wind. Ayase opened her eyes and ran her gaze across the subdued sky that lay over Shibuya's clustered buildings. As she murmured, she brought her enormous sword up to her chest. She embraced it gently with both arms. Mysteriously, that sharp-looking sword placed not a single wound on her body. Ayase's expression contorted in grief. Quiet tears spilled from her eyes. Those voicelessly wept teardrops dance into space, borne away by the wind. Ayase slowly spread her arms out on either side, as though to embrace the sky itself as though to indicate her existence to a distant and high-up god. The pale pulsing of her sword increased in ferocity. Aisei closed her eyes for a second time. At that moment, a final tear overflowed from the corners of her eyes. And she stepped forward without a moment's hesitation. And with nothing there to hold up her body, Ayase sensed the chilly wind tenderly stroking her cheek and felt that she had been freed from everything. Helpless, all I could do was watch. When Ayase spread her arms out on both sides, she slowly stepped into thin air as though an invisible stairway lay there. Screaming and a general roar overflowed from the spectators all at once. Ayase's body lost its support like a puppet whose strings had been cut, and she flew inverted through the air. Everything went into slow motion. Ayase's body plummeted down. Her rate of descent was horribly slow. But she was definitely falling dying. She would die. I couldn't save her. It would be impossible to save her, falling from that height. Moreover, below her was concrete. Her bones would shatter, her innards would be crushed, her spinal fluid would come bursting out, and blackish blood would spray every which way. If only a flower bed or something were there. If only it were soft soil. Then maybe she would survive. I didn't want to see the moment of anyone's death. I was about to close my eyes. That instant, I felt it. A tingling at the nape of my neck. I turned around. No one was watching me. Everyone was either facing down or looking up. Whose eyes are those eyes? A sound resounded. Sound of falling. It was the first time I'd heard it. 
That sound was unexpectedly soft. Masaka. Beside me, Masumi widened his eyes, stunned. Though his line of sight ought to have been pointed toward the place where I say landed, his gaze was filled more with a powerful surprise than with horror or sorrow. Not only Masumi, all of the spectators, wearing expressions of incomprehension, went speechless. Ikita. Eh? Alive? I say lay fallen. I couldn't tell whether or not her bones had shattered. I couldn't tell whether or not her innards had turned to pulp. Her spinal fluid hadn't come lashing out. Blackish blood wasn't flown everywhere. <laughs> A frail but certain groan spilled from Ayase's mouth. She was alive. She appeared to have lost consciousness and didn't budge an inch. But she had almost no visible injuries, only a minor trace of blood on her forehead. Even though she had fallen from the roof, she lay collapsed there, all but unhurt, on a flower bed. Kodani. Had been there, or er, had there been, a flower bed there?予定と結果に大きな違いがあったようだが我々は進化への第一歩を踏み出したんですよ見けたもの死人が出るなど我々は聞いておらんぞ計画に不備があったのかねいいえお二人にはぜひ人の進化の歴史というものを振り返ってみ
No, I, just out of curiosity, though, I don't expect this to fix it. No, it doesn't. Uh, so all I know, something about secret organization, shrouded mystery, rumored to pull the strings of the world from behind the scenes, composed of only 300 members. They are known as the Unseen Rulers. Their subordinates include royalty and intelligence agencies from numerous nations. With a focus as well on banking enterprises, they are all puppets of the 300, even other secret societies that would appear in conspiracy theories. It is said almost the entire world is bent to their will, whether it be companies, police, research institutes, etc. However, their true existence will remain a mere rumor to the end. The Committee of 300's ultimate goal is theorized as the construction of the so-called New World Order under the Human Domestication Project. Outside of the elite, one billion will be left behind as all others are slaughtered. Those billions will... And then the bit that I can't read because it copies over, but I'm guessing something about remains as slaves subject to the rulers, but I'm not quite certain on that one. I think that's what it says, though. Don't know why it's... It's broken. It's, it's just broken. The glossary is broken. That's good to know, I guess. Uh, I ran from school to the park with all my might, stopping only when my breath ceased coming. Or my breaths ceased coming. My lungs furiously sought oxygen. As I wheezed, I took a s swift look about the park. There were absolutely no human figures around. I didn't catch sight of the personages I dreaded, Shogun and Yua. Relieved, I began collecting my breaths. It was close to evening. The sky gradually transformed from blue to the color of twilight. The usual quietness of this park made the previous uproar at school seem like a lie. That incident had ended in a failed suicide attempt. An ambulance carried Ayase off. I had no way of knowing what happened to her afterward. After the stir, I gave up on searching for Rimi and ran away from there. Er, and ran away here. <laughs> The spectacle from before was indelibly seared into the back of my brain. At the time, as Aise fell, I thought she could never be saved. But she lived. I still didn't know the, eh. I still didn't know the details, but at least she hadn't died. She was breathing, she had few, if any other wounds. Under normal circumstances, she would definitely have died. She was miraculously saved. Because she fell atop the soft earth of a flower bed. But it was physically impossible for ISA to have fallen on a flower bed. Because there had not been anything like a flower bed down there. Until the instant before ISA fell, the place had been the paved asphalt of a parking lot. Several teachers' cars were parked there. Despite that, why, in a single second, had a flower bed? manifested. Had I done it? Even in the midst of being upset over it, I'd envisioned that maybe there was a flower bed beneath her. But just because of that, could a split-second delusion like that actually become reality? I'd wondered if I had some kind of special power, but I'd and I'd undergone the similar experience of witnessing ISA die, divide in two, but... Could I do something as amazing as creating a flower bed instantaneously? Even though I didn't possess a D-sword? Furthermore, that flower bed had continued existing even after ISA fell. When teachers ran up to her as she lay there, they left footprints amid the flowers. The flowers blooming there, I thought they were the same as those planted in the courtyard flower beds. Had their stems bent from being trodden on by the ambulance crew? And they were probably still in the same place even now. A delusion had become reality and stayed that way. It hadn't ultimately disappeared like ISA's doppelganger. And everyone had accepted the flower bed as if its presence there were perfectly nat or perfectly normal. None of them had expressed any doubts about it. Could I seriously do that? Oi. Uh oh. Huh? <laughs> A sharp voice called me from behind. Before I had a chance to turn around, a hand stretched out and seized the front of my shirt. Without my having any chance to struggle, 
I got shoved violently into the playground equipment. <laughs> My back slammed powerfully against it and I moaned in pain. I think we did red last time, so green. I have no idea what you're talking about. Senna was the one who had used violence against me out of the blue. She grabbed the front of my shirt and pulled me up with incredible force. I couldn't breathe. I wanted my arm. I waved my arms around in vain, but she showed no indication of letting me go. On top of that, her eyes were brimming with a sharp light that might be interpreted as a desire to kill. I went cold, thinking she'd murder me, and frantically shook my head. <laughs> Senna's fierce breathing brushed my cheek. I cowered, almost convinced that she was literally going to bite me. Glaring at me point blank, she... <laughs> Something soft pushed at my lips. Unable to comprehend what was happening and, furthermore, finding myself unable to breathe, I went dizzy. Though I thought of running away, Senna was still gripping my shirt front and I couldn't move. <laughs> On top of that, something darted bewitchingly, invading its way into my mouth. It wildly wound about my tongue, licked along the ridge of my teeth, violated me. I was far at sea, yet for some reason it felt incredibly good. But it was hard to breathe nevertheless, and I seemed about to pass out. Right beforehand, that something wriggled out of my mouth at last. <laughs> or wriggled, whatever. <sighs> Senna's lips glistened with saliva. Though she'd previously glared at me with murderous eyes, she now gazed at me meltingly. Could it be that... she'd kissed me? You <laughs> 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 Upon declaring those perplexing things in an angry tone, she brought her face close to mine again. She pressed her lips upon mine mattingly and assaulted the inside of my mouth. Therein entered her heated sighs and sweet saliva. My God. Um. So again, I, I, I think we're at the point where we're blind. So I, I have no freaking clue. Uh, what's going on really anymore? Um, or at least like you know, I don't have any idea of what's going on because, like I said, I'm pretty sure we're at the point where I'm going in blind now. Wearing an expression of ecstasy, she delivered what. Eroge is that from? Type lines to me. Senna bit down hard on my lip. Pain shot through me, and the taste of blood spread in my mouth. Yeah, that. Uh, not quite our kink. Hers was not the attitude of someone making a request. For starters, the things she was saying were absurd. But the sensation of being reverse raped excited me, making me think maybe I could enjoy this kind of play. Hmm, okay. Hoi, uh, so my timer is about to go off, so I think we'll go ahead and cut this a little bit short uh, for the video itself. Uh, so that's going to be it for this part. I will see you all next time. Probably going to go and record the next part back to back. Um, but yeah, so I'll see you all next time. A uh, quick reminder, down in the description you will find a link to my Discord. I do highly recommend that you join that if you want to stay updated on what's going on with the channel because that is my go-to place for posting about that type of stuff. Sometimes I remember to post elsewhere, but generally I don't. So I highly recommend that you join that so that you can stay updated on what's going on with the channel 
assuming you care to stay up to date on what's going on with the channel. Um, you will also find a link down there to my Patreon, as well as a Streamlabs donation link. Both of those are the best ways to help support the channel. Uh, Patreon comes with some goodies, namely it gives you early access to videos. Uh, how early access is that varies a little bit by video, uh, but I generally post my videos over the weekend. So in the case of this series, which is which goes up on Tuesday, for me at least, in my time zone, goes up sort of mid-morning, about a little bit before 10 a.m. on Tuesdays. Um, you're looking at, because I'll generally post the videos, or I'll generally upload the videos to YouTube like Friday or Saturday uh, in the afternoon. And also because I'm ahead on recordings, it gives plenty of time for YouTube to generally process the videos. Um, so you're going to be looking at often, what, 72-ish hours, 72, 96 hours, something like that, if my math's correct. Um, obviously not 100%, but, you know, somewhere in that sort of ballpark is what you're looking at. Um. But it should be noted, because Patreon takes their own cut, and then there's the transferring it into my account so I can actually spend the money. I don't get, I don't take home, or the channel doesn't take home as much of a cut via Patreon. If you don't care about getting those goodies and you want to just support the channel, the best way to do that would be going through the Streamlabs link. Um, because Streamlabs themselves doesn't take a cut, and basically any of the methods for doing the donations have minimal fees generally so if you just care about supporting the channel i would advise using streamlabs they did recently as of like a month or two ago or so uh, add in a monthly donation option basically as an alternative to twitch subs is really what it's intended for but you can use it as a knockoff patreon if you don't care about the goodies that patreon provides um, if I find some way to automate um, the monthly donations, um, it, maybe I'll find some way of giving you guys the uh, early access that Patreons get, or that patrons get. But at least as of right now, Streamlabs doesn't provide a good way of doing that, in my opinion. Um, or at least I haven't found a way to make use of things. So, yeah. But yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. I will see you all next time. Links to all that stuff down below in the description. You can check out whatever you want for those. And I will see you all next time. Till then, goodbye and farewell.